Yeah, I wouldn't have ever thought to put jasmine and peppermint together, Michelle. <laughs> it's like when you're aligned, when your chakras are aligned, then it's all green light. When your heart and your mind and your tummy and your feet and everything is like all heading in the same direction, it's like there's no stopping you, you know? So, yeah, lovely, lovely. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my workshop. It's the seven main chakras, a self-care workshop with a live chakra reading. I'm really excited about this because for me, self-care and chakras and energy, they all go hand in hand. Yeah, so I'm really curious about what would bring someone to a self-care chakra workshop and so think about what it is that you really like about self-care and your familiarity with chakra. So I'll start by introducing myself. Well, my name is Maria and I'm a storytelling coach and the author of Closer to Indigo. And I coach spiritual storytellers to heal their past and create a brighter future using the magic of crystals, storytelling, and essential oils. My work is to help inspire people to raise their vibe and tell a new story. And I think that working from a chakra level is a really, really creative and customizable way of approaching self-care. A couple of months ago, I downloaded this. And I was trying to figure out a way to arrange the chakras that wasn't in a linear form. And this is what I got. And it's really interesting on so many levels. And so what I started doing was each day, I would focus on a different chakra. For, and there's a chakra, a main chakra for each day of the week. So I would boost up my chakras on a weekly basis. And so on Monday, it's root chakra day. Tuesday is sacral chakra day and today is Thursday so it's heart chakra day and so I use that as an overarching theme so today for example I'm wearing green for heart chakra day and it's really made my life a lot brighter and simpler because when I focus on a particular chakra then it helps me choose what clothes I'm going to wear it helps me choose what food I'm going to eat it helps me just you know, make those decisions easier. Like it helps me what kind of activities I want to do. And after six or seven weeks now, I'm feeling so much better. And so that's what I want to share today is I want to share like, okay, so let's talk about each of the chakras and then you can implement however you like, use this template if you want, and then see what happens. Oh, this is my self-care for today. This is what I'm going to do and da, 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 and see as you build on it, how life improves. It's just something that came organically to me and I'm really excited about it. So does anybody have any questions so far about that? Oh, okay. <laughs> so as another thing that I started to do was I started using this template as a spread for my tarot card readings. And so I do a reading based on seeing where someone is with their chakras. So if it's the positive card on the chakra, that means the chakra is humming. But if it's more of a negative card, then you can see where you might need a little bit of work. So that's going swimmingly. And Elaine already had one reading, like it's really, really cool. So that's what we'll be doing a little bit later. And so the group will receive a chakra healing constellation reading as well. When I say self-care. So what comes to mind for you? What kind of activities do you like to do? Does anybody want to answer? Elaine? I'll step in there because I write on this and encourage this with any of the clients I have or, you know, in my postings that self-care, yes, we can go for a massage, mani-pedi, you know, get our hair done. All those things are self-care. But we have to look deeper than that because self-care is something we have to do every day. It's making sure we have enough sleep, that we eat nutritiously, get our activity. And it's all the things that we do every day. 
who are we surrounding ourselves with? So all of those things are important for self-care. Plus, our spiritual care, our emotional care, just making sure all those things are there. And my focus is often on leadership with people. And I like to remind them that if you're going to be a leader and want to lead others, you need to be able to lead yourself. And leading self requires that self-care that we do. Oh, yeah. Because you can't get somebody else and say, oh, these are the things you need to do if you aren't doing those things for yourself. We need to be able to lead ourselves before we can yeah. lead anyone else. 100%. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It starts with us. It really does. And we get to determine what we do. And it's not about anybody else. And once you center yourself and take care of yourself and make yourself your number one priority, then you'll be able to give from your abundance to everyone else in your life. So definitely self-care is about that. And anyone else? Jackie? Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that Elaine said. For me, it is about prioritizing it because for many years I didn't. And like many people, I learned the hard way. One thing that I often talk to clients about is making sure that they do something that they love every single day, because that's what helps keep your vibration high. Whereas if you're just nose to the grindstone every day, then your vibration's dipping. So yeah, yeah. it's a big one for me. I remember I have a friend who's a fitness instructor and many years ago, maybe 15 years ago, she lost her partner and she was a wreck, you know, like it was really emotional. It was terrible. She said that every day I try to do something nice for myself. Every day she tried to do something like give herself a flower or, you know, listen to some music or do anything. And that helped her get through that rough patch. And I like mental note <laughs> that self-care is very important. Totally get that. You've got to make it a priority. You've got to make time for it. And it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. It could be really, really, really simple, like making yourself a cup of tea. It doesn't have to be going to the spa or anything like that. It can, it can be, but it doesn't have to be something like that. Anybody else? Yes, Bridget. Thank you for sharing that. I agree as well with everything that's been said so far. I think just to add for me in terms of specifics, getting outside sometime during the day is important for me. And if possible, doing some sort of gentle movement, probably a walk. It doesn't have to be long. And, and I love to take pictures and photographs. That's one of my kind of mindful things, just somewhere where I can do that and just clear my head without anyone else. Yeah, nice nature and creativity two of my favorites <laughs> yeah and claire did you want to chime in yes i'm a bit of a, a bliss bunny i love my spa days i love any kind of massage treatment i make it a little bit of a hobby like i sift through loads of things looking for offers two for one deal it's a hobby of mine because the pampering as much as possible that i can afford that's a real special one for me nature yeah, time in nature. And I find support of other women is a really oh. cool one. I haven't always had that. I grew up with a very fractured relationship with my mum and didn't trust that. But actually, as I've healed over the years, having a sister circle. So I go to regular like moon circles with women. We go and take our drums and like bang them on Dartmoor, which is like a big wild area near where I live. We talk to trees and just play. That's really, I think that's when I feel really safe and connected. And that's oh. that's really important to gift myself that regularly, you know. So yeah, I think that's my top ones. Oh, nice. Oh, I love that you mentioned trees. Talking to trees. They do. They they talk. They communicate. I could do a whole workshop on just the ecosystem of trees. Oh, wonderful. Looks like everyone is already well immersed in self-care. And that's just super. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a quick overview about each chakra. And just to give a theme, describe the, the chakra and then distinguish it from the others. Chakras are energy centers and they're color coded. They each have their own color and they each vibrate at their own frequency and they have their own realm of influence. And when they're humming, they're like a, a fan and you can just see around them. 
but when they're clogged up, then they're really slow. So when they're humming, then all the things that they're associated with are working. But when they're clogged or slow or foggy, then you'll find that you have blocks in certain areas or maybe some physical ailments, for example, that might show up, that might show you where your chakra could use some upgrading or boosting. So there's a relationship between the energy center and how it shows up in your physical body. Does that make sense? Am I missing anything? Does anybody want to add to what chakras are or anything like that? No, we're good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the first chakra, we're going to start from the, the lower chakras, the base chakra and move up. The first chakra we're going to talk about is the root chakra. And the root chakra is located at the bottom of the spine in your undercarriage. And it is like the root. It's the base chakra. It's our connection to earth. It's our secure foundation. And it's all about having our physical and financial needs being met. So if you're feeling supported by the earth and you're connected to the earth, then you feel safe and secure and you feel like you're coming from a strong foundation and the color associated with the root chakra is red or anything like brown or black very sort of earthy grounding colors very warm colors so things that you can do to really connect with your root chakra is something I did earlier this summer is walk barefoot on the grass have your feet touch the earth I mean, we don't do that very much because we wear shoes and stuff, you know, <laughs> but just really being able to immerse yourself and root yourself in the earth will really help you feel safe and secure. And like trees, trees have long roots extending into the ground. And then there are crystals that you can use that go with the root chakra. And so something like a, a red jasper, for example, can really help you focus on your root chakra or something like hematite and hematite is like a real silver crystal and the cool thing about hematite it's like hemoglobin like blood and when you look at the the hematite through a microscope there are actually little red dots inside the structure it's really cool that way and an essential oil that might be good might be something like a frankincense that's very sort of heavy and warm and grounding very calming or something like vetiver which is which is a grass but it's still got this earthy aroma to it like it's very spicy and comforting as well and then you can go to town with red items like fruits, you know, apples and cranberries and pomegranates. So if you wanted to incorporate more red energy into your life, then eat red foods and, and so forth. Does anybody have any other suggestions for the root chakra? Just nope. the, the tree oils, uh, Maria, for the root chakra, so the, like Siberian fir, anything, yeah, that sort of tree, tree yeah. oil. Yeah. Really. Yeah, for sure. Seed makes, wood. Yeah. Yeah. Makes you feel like your feet are firm on the ground. And yeah. Yeah. You totally get it. Thank you. And Claire, did you want to say something? It was just something else tree related. <laughs> I often, if I'm feeling a little bit ungrounded, I'll go and just sit with my back, sit on a sheepskin or something with my back to an oak tree, which is very oh. common around where I live. But any tree, I suppose, would work. But I particularly find oak trees very grounding and root nourishing. They make me feel very stable and strong and held, like almost like a hug. So yeah, sitting by a tree can really help with my root chakra. Oh, nice. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's something about oak. Oak itself is strong. Something about it that we associate with oak is like very strong and solid. Elaine? Just want to comment that Tartmath is doing research with trees and how they communicate with each other and with us and other plants. And it is absolutely fascinating. So if anybody wants to look up heart math and trees, they'll find quite a bit of information online about heart math and trees. Oh, and great. The research they're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Thank you, Elaine. That's so cool. Hey, Christina. Hi, welcome. Go ahead. Hi, Christina. Thank you, and please excuse the delay. I won't go into the excuses, but family matters, unfortunately. So, oh, 
to the delay. Oh, well, you're Thank welcome. You. Glad, glad you made it. Yeah. Thank you for letting me in. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. So we're just talking about the chakras right now, and we've just finished covering the root chakra. So we've got six to go. We're just talking about how we can combine the chakra energy with self-care and choose your self-care that goes along with it. And it really take your, your energy up to a whole new level. So we're having a grand old time so far. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue on. So the next chakra is the sacral chakra. And that's located in the womb area. And it's our creative artist center. To me, the sacral chakra is like sitting around a campfire and singing Kumbaya. Like it's, it's a sort of warm and fuzzy feeling. And it's about nurturing and caring and belonging and divine feminine. So it's all the feminine quality, like receiving and nurturing and caring and fertility and motherhood. And its color is orange. So when this energy is humming and healthy, then your creative energy is you're feeling really inspired and you're maybe making art or raising children or something like re you're really doing a lot of interesting activities and work and it's also about allowing yourself to receive and some of us have difficulty receiving some people are really good at giving and they give 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 but they don't receive very well and so the sacral chakra reminds us to receive. So the thing about self-care is it's a giving and receiving energy. So you're giving yourself care, but you're also receiving it at the same time. So it's really cool that you can do this for yourself. In terms of crystals, the favorite probably is carnelian. And carnelian is the artist crystal. So Bridget, you like taking photographs and things like that. This is a really good one for you. It's just very warm, just really lovely. Another one for the sacral chakra would be a sunstone because it's orange. So this is sunstone. And an essential oil would be like wild orange or bergamot or ylang ylang. All those sort of have these creative feminine energies around them. So does anybody want to share or from your experience with the sacral chakra? Jackie, yes? Mine comes from my chakra dancing teaching. So obviously because of where the sacral is located between our hips, we do a lot of hip movements when we dance the sacral chakra. And to encourage people to do that, we often use scarves or ribbons to oh. try and, which kind of brings in that playfulness as well to try and get the sacral chakra moving. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. There's a song by Shakira, Hips Don't Lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. Yeah, that's really cool. I love that idea. <laughs> love it. Okay. Anyone else? No, we're good. Okay. So let's move on to the solar plexus. And the solar plexus is located right in your tummy and it's your gut. And they say that we have two brains, maybe more, but you've got your thinking brain and then you've got your solar plexus brain. And we can really tell a lot from our environment and a lot of people register it in their solar plexus. The solar plexus is all about having a vision of what you want to do and then having the confidence to go towards it and taking the action steps to go towards it it's very masculine in its energy action oriented solar plexus it's like make hay while the sun shines it's working hard by daylight and going towards your dream and and really feeling good and confident about what you're doing and a lot of times we either like overcompensate in that muscular energy or we undercompensate in that muscular energy like where we we don't go there at all or we're too confident so it that was a really tricky one but when you've got like your vision and you're taking action steps it can really really help improve your life and we also need both we need the feminine energy from the sacral chakra and we need the masculine energy from the solar plexus and they work together crystals that are really good for the solar plexus are the golden tiger's eye and citrine 
So the golden tiger's eye is like having that vision, like a cat. <laughs> you know, they know exactly where they're going. They're like beeline. <laughs> and the citrine is more about like really sunny and joyful energy. Essential oils would be like lemongrass or lemon or something really sunny and bright and cheerful that nothing's really coming to mind. Does anybody have any ideas for essential oils for the solar plexus? It's one actually that I've used fairly recently. And as you mentioned, it's sort of gut instinct and awakening that. I needed to make a big decision about life choices, really. And I've been using this one lately. It's called Align. And it's been really, really good. I don't know what's in it, but when I put it on, I can smell some citrus oil in it. I can smell a woody-like oh. oil in it. So I think it's probably got cedar wood oh. and other related oils. But it's written in such small print. Don't ask me to read it for you. <laughs> I've got no idea what's in there. But it's worth looking it up and yeah. it's worth trying. You know, it's. It, I found it particularly good for manifesting a choice and then actually having the right sort of decision made on it. But, you know, it might be linked to the gut and it feels right. You know, the decision yeah. I've made lies properly within my body and oh. I don't feel calm now that I've taken some of it. You know, maybe that might help as well for anybody that's in that situation. And usually tummy tells you whether you're making yeah. the right or the wrong decision, I've found. Yeah, very important. Elaine? Align the ingredients, Sina, and uh, for the rest of you are bergamot, coriander, marjoram, peppermint, geranium, basil, rose, and jasmine. Wow. Wow. What mixture? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, quite a mixture. Yeah, I wouldn't have ever thought to put jasmine and peppermint together, Michelle. <laughs> It's like when you're aligned, when your chakras are aligned, then it's all green light. When your heart and your mind and your tummy and your feet and everything is like all heading in the same direction, it's like there's no stopping you, you know? So, yeah, lovely, lovely. Okay, so unless anyone else has anything quick to say, we'll move on to the heart chakra. The heart chakra is really interesting because it's the bridge between the lower chakras, which are more physical, and the upper chakras, which are more spiritual. And it kind of dances between them both. And that's why I think that the heart chakra can either be two colors. It could be either green or pink. A lot of times people associate pink with the heart chakra, and sometimes they associate green. And to me, those colors are kind of like the green association is more masculine and the pink association is more feminine so that's how I see it so the heart chakra is all about love and prosperity and health and new beginnings and it's about springtime and vibrancy it sort of covers all the bases health wealth love it's got it all and I like to think of our heart as the rhythm of our life so dancing, for example, is a really great heart chakra activity because the heart is like the timekeeper, the, the drum. When your heart chakra is not at its optimum, then you'll feel sad, you'll feel maybe depressed, you might have anxiety or something like that. But when you're feeling good, you're like in love with the world and enjoying life and being loved and loving and there's lots you can do to help your heart feel good and so the crystals would be the green aventurine and this one is about love and wealth it brings love and wealth and this is the rose quartz and so this is like about all the different kinds of love starting with self-love and there's like love for your pets, love for your children, love for your siblings, love for your parents, love for your community, love for mother earth, love for the divine. So rose quartz, if you're looking for more love, that's the one to bring in. And essential oils, of course, you've got uh, rose essential oils, probably 
the easiest one, but there are others. Well, maybe the tree ones. Yeah, like cedar wood, any of those tree ones would definitely be very heart chakra. Does anybody have any ideas about essential oils or crystals that might help boost the heart chakra or self-care in general, Bridget? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, marjoram is good for the heart oh, and uh, yeah. connection um, to yourself. And magnolia too, that oh, sort of like yeah. compassion for yourself. I've got magnolia. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Like it's, it a lot. Yeah, it's a floral, but it's sour floral, I think. Anyone else? Christina? I was just wondering, I heard Parma Rosa. Would oh. that Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. I love Palmarosa. I love the word. <laughs> I just, yeah, it's yeah. So it's got the rosy kind of. It's floral. Excellent, excellent recommendation. Anybody else? Any other activities, self care that you can do to give your heart a little extra TLC? Anybody can think of it, anything? Or like uh, walking in the forest, maybe would be a good one. Another thing that's good for the heart is to just do some focused breathing. Oh, focused yeah. breathing and recalling and feeling times when you have felt good and happy bring in those positive emotions as you're breathing and feel them in your heart yeah nice and claire um yeah so i had this lovely experience recently in a, in a women's circle where they they invited us to journal what does our heart want us to hear and that was so it was such a simple prompt but it really it was really powerful, loads of us crying. It was just really Aww. beautiful and touching what our hearts wanted to share with us. And, and, and also we had the choice of sharing that then in the room, but you didn't have to. And, um, yeah, it was really like hearing a deeper layer of myself that I sometimes forget to listen to. So that was really powerful. Do you remember your message and would you like to share it with us? Um, it was very simple it was like I want to play <laughs> oh. I want to have fun and play it was very bouncy like a little pixie and it was like I want to play <laughs> oh. letting, yeah letting that side of me out more oh, that yeah. playful curious innocence that yeah can get sort of a bit lost in the modern world and all its <laughs> yeah all its busyness but it was yeah it was really beautiful to hear that Yes, excellent, excellent. I did something similar like that a couple of years ago when I got the download from my heart. It was, uh, I am with you anyways and always. Yeah, so no matter what you do or what's going wrong or what's going right, I'm here. I'm here with you all along. And so that was very comforting to me. The heart's been there since second one, you know. It's, it's been like through the whole thing. Our heart's been with us our whole lives. It's kind of comforting for me. So play and your heart's there all the time. Okay, great. So now we're moving on into the upper chakras and we're going into the throat chakra, which is shoulders and mouth and ears, nose. And it's all about self-expression and creativity and being authentic and feeling free, feeling free to be yourself and do what you like. I work with spiritual storytellers. And so for, for spiritual storytellers, the throat chakra is probably the main chakra for us. I like to write. I like to do art. So all of that comes from the self-expression and letting yourself be seen and heard. So the throat chakra, if it's really under really slow or clogged up or whatever, then you'll have trouble speaking up for yourself or you you wouldn't come to something like this because you wouldn't want to, to like be seen or something. So it means that coming here today, showing up for yourself, which is lovely. You're speaking up and you're sharing your own wisdom with everybody here. So, so that's super. And the uh, throat chakra is blue. So all things blue, like the blue sky. And so when you look out at the blue sky, it's like infinity, you know, it's freedom. It's like expansion. 
And so for this one, I have some turquoise. And turquoise is really good to have when you're traveling. It helps with um, keeping you safe, especially overseas. And it's also a good conversation piece. So if you have some turquoise jewelry, take it with you when you're traveling. It's also very spiritual. But there are other blue crystals, like say this blue quartz, it's also good for, for the throat chakra. And essential oils that are good for the blue chakra would be like blue chamomile or blue tansy. What else that's blue? Can anyone think of any, any blue? Lotus, that you... the blue lotus. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Oh, yeah, I have blue lotus. This is lovely. It's also floral and sour, mm -hmm. <laughs> I find. Yeah. So any of these crystals and essential oils will help you express your throat chakra and use your, your voice. Oh, yes, Bridget. Maria, a lavender is also associated with the, the throat chakra. It's kind of like the oil of communication. Yeah. Um, and that's a lovely one as well. Yeah. L lavender is one of those that covers a lot of ground. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely use lavender as a way to sort of relax, just let yourself just be not be so much in your head about how other people are perceiving you. So just relax and enjoy lavender. Yeah. Elaine, yes, I have been told numerous, numerous times that my throat chakra is blocked, that I have trouble with it being blocked. And for those who know me, you know, they might think I, I talk a lot and, and things like that, but I think I do have trouble communicating. So I pay a lot of attention to trying to speak authentically, to write authentically, and to let those things out. Not sure I'm succeeding, but I'm doing my best. And Bridget, thank you for suggesting the lavender, because I tend to use it at nighttime more often. Maybe I need to use it and the blue lotus more often through the day. Help me get out what I want to get out. Yeah. Yes, Jackie. So it's not oils, but um, the thing that I find the most helpful is either singing or chanting so oh. that you're using your voice to free itself up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excellent. Yes, I love I love that. Oh, I don't want to hear me singing, though. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't matter though, because that's about the freedom to be yourself. Yes, yeah. but I can sing for myself. Yeah. my husband's a professional singer, so I'm a little intimidated. Okay. <laughs> go, go and go and sit in the car and have the windows up and sing in there. <laughs> oh yeah. So no, I turn them down. <laughs> oh, <I'm kidding. laughs> Even better. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I was thinking as well, rhymes and poetry, because it sort of uh, pulls the emotions together. That's what singing does for me anyway. It releases the emotions. Sometimes things that I can't say, you can say through a song. And it's the same with poetry. If you say that out loud, it also releases, I should imagine, some of the thoughts that get caught and some of the feelings that you've got. So I suppose yeah. any way that you use your voice is, yeah. is good. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that. Words, words carry energy. And mm -hmm. when you use your voice, you're speaking what you want out into your environment, into your life. And we start off when we're babies, we use our voices. <laughs> I can remember my niece like ah, in my ear <laughs> as a baby, you know, screaming, but like, don't suppress your voice because that can really cause a lot of damage. Really express yourself, share what you need and sh express your emotions. And music is such like something about sort of the musicality of a song with the lyrics that can put you right into that emotional space. Like it's, it's amazing yeah. how someone can capture a feeling in a song. Christina, mm -hmm. did you want to add something? I was just saying it's it's a freedom to cry as well. Oh, yeah. You know, when you sing, there are some that move you literally to tears. I, I was in a big choir a while back and there were some things that I found exceedingly hard to sing, but we're all 
stood there in the choir holding hands singing certain things that moved us you know incredibly and it's a, a communal thing as well I suppose choirs are very very communal and it's a shared experience and having that shared experience with others helps a lot so even if you go to a rock concert, not even, but, you know, if you if you go to a rock concert and take that energy in, you know, it really boosts you in more ways than one, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I don't know what we do as human beings without music. Oh, wonderful. Love it, love it, love it, love it. The next chakra is the third eye chakra, and it's linked to our pineal gland, and it's about internal vision. So the solar plexus is more about your external vision and the, the third eye is more looking inward. And it's about trusting our intuition and trusting our guidance and going into the mystic and using our intuition and all that. And it's hard to define. So like indigo is the main color for the third eye. And it's like hard to kind of pinpoint what exactly indigo is and that's kind of a reflection of the chakra it's kind of like this sort of in between space this color so the indigo is kind of purple kind of blue kind of black somewhere in there crystals that can work with with the third eye is uh soda light and this one is this lasceline and which is like my favorite i think out of all of them and so they're all about communicating your inner truth. And yeah, it's very spiritual as well. And essential oils, we can also use a lot of the examples that we used in, for the throat chakra. So lavender, blue lotus for sure. So any of like the sort of really dark blue uh, type uh, oils. Does anybody have any other suggestions for either the crystals or essential oils or self-care for the third eye Ruby, yeah sorry i didn't catch the second crystal i broke oh. up a little bit of my end oh yeah it's lapis lazuli ah okay or thank you lapis lazuli or lapis <laughs> it's like how do you pronounce it yeah this this i bought myself for my birthday a couple of months ago so it's really trusting your own self and that's another thing that we have to sort of teach ourselves to do because because society isn't going to teach you to trust yourself. It's something that you have to take on and really trust trust your inner guidance and trust your gut and trust your heart that this is the, the direction you want to be going in. You can get into that state through meditation. It's really probably the most obvious self-care for, for the third eye. Does anybody have anything to add? Oh, yes, Claire. Over the years, something I've really used, and you can use for any chakra, is there's been loads of free resources online which have like various frequencies of those chakras, oh. um, like subliminal kind of uh, resonance or whatever they call them. There's like, well, there's Schumann frequencies, which are like different scales and things that people follow. But yeah, I've, I've used really effectively during meditation, like played the frequency of that area, like the chakra yeah um and it sort of tunes it up as well yeah. as like the meditation so i found that really good for particularly yeah like the third eye if it puts you in like a theta state you know or yeah you can affect your, your brain frequencies yeah. you know that can really help with that inner and you sort of can be taken on a lovely journey through your yeah. inner landscape which can be really lovely so, yeah. yeah that's one i i like to use i do that too i go to youtube and i type in a frequency and I listen to that music that goes along with the frequency and it helps me if it's like heart day, for example, then it's like 600 and something, 639, I think it is, hertz. And so if you listen to that music, then it will correspond with your heart chakra. So good. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. And the last chakra is, oh, sorry. Bridget, yeah. Just thought of a couple of things there, actually, about the music. I don't know whether it's the same in Canada, but we're having a lot of sort of sound bath practitioners oh, and events yeah. becoming really popular. And I know a lady near us locally, she's, she went to India and trained and she's got loads of different instruments and she bases her sessions focused on a particular chakra. So I guess that's maybe a little oh. bit similar to the music thing yeah. uh, in terms of the 
YouTube and, um, and listening to that. And then the, the other couple of quick observations about third eye is just to what can be useful, I find, to just capture some of that because sometimes you can have it and then it's gone, isn't it? Is, yeah. is, is journaling or maybe just oh. if an idea comes to you, just using your phone and doing a quick note on your phone so that you know while you're out and about you can go back to it later and and hopefully it'll it'll flow back to you what you were thinking yes very important I, I did that this morning I did a quick meditation this morning and I got this really cool idea and as soon as I finished I wrote it down in my journal and I was like okay <laughs> and the last chakra we got the crown chakra which is here and uh the crown chakra at the top of the head is our connection to the divine so it's like downloading from the divine all through our body and it's like raising our consciousness and knowing that we're all connected that we all belong together and we're all children of the universe and we're all worthy so the crown chakra is very healing it's very peaceful it's very spiritual and we're all giving and receiving we're all communicating via the crown chakra and the thing about the crown chakra is it can only be really effective and strong if all of the other chakras are working so you really need to have a strong foundation and work on the lower chakras and then the crown chakra will open up and it's about enlightenment. But there is no enlightenment without having a firm, strong foundation. So that's why we have to sort of talk about all of them. And so for the crown chakra, of course, amethyst is probably the most obvious out of them. So this one's purple and the crown chakra is associated with purple and violet in the rainbow you could see all of these colors lined up in exactly this order with the purple being up at the top essential oils lavender again rose probably i'd put into the crown chakra as well very high vibrational jasmine is put into the crown chakra can anyone think of anything else uh, frankincense oh, i think yeah. is yeah for that too isn't it yeah it is very spiritual, frankincense being one of the gifts that was given to Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, mm. for sure. And myrrh, too, I put mm. in the crown chakra as well. Okay, if your crown chakra is not very strong, then you might have things like headaches, or you might have a lot of doubt about your purpose, or you might scoff at spirituality or religion, or feel very sort of alone and not supported but if it's humming then you really feel connected connected to everything to the oneness of it all that's basically seven main chakras there are others but we're, we just for simplicity keeping it to the main seven so because we're pressed for time so i'm just going to do like a really quick chakra healing constellation reading for everybody so if everyone can just while i'm shuffling to just close your eyes and relax your shoulders and put your feet facing forwards and connect it to the earth to the floor if you can and just feel yourself connected with the earth and with everybody here and now put your attention onto your heart chakra and trust that your heart will give you guidance if you follow your heart only good could come from it and also tune in to your third eye and to your intuition. And I'm going to connect with our spirit guides and angels and our intuition. What do us spiritual storytellers need to hear today? Which chakras are in, are flowing, and which ones need a little boost? Thank you, spirit and angels, for your loving and healing guidance. Well, I'm just going to arrange the cards face down on my chakra constellation template. And then we'll just quickly go through each of the chakras one by one to see what's going on with all of us. So you're welcome to come back into the room. I'm ready to go. And uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, for the <laughs> root chakra, we have the page of cups. And so the page of cups is all about 
all about receiving a message. And it's kind of like a fun and flirty energy. It's a young, youthful energy. And it's like starting off on this sort of playful note. So this page of cups has a message for us. And it's about being healthy and vibrant and being a little bit goofy if you want. Yeah, he's got like this fish in his cup, you know, so he's a little got a little bit of a sense of humor. So that's a really good place to start, the page of cups. And the next card that's on the sacral chakra, oh my goodness, it's the Empress. And the Empress is is divine feminine at her best. Like how perfect for the sacral chakra. Like she's got it all together. She's creative. She's wealthy. She's nurturing. She's she's supported. She speaks her mind. She's a leader. And uh, she's got it going on. Yeah, she's going to go dancing later. <laughs> yeah, so wonderful. And she oh, she's also sitting on an orange pillow there, which is kind of cool. Never noticed that before. And the next chakra is the solar plexus. And this is the seven of pentacles. And the seven of pentacles, the pentacles represent work and coins and making money. So it's about earning money for your work. And so this guy on the solar plexus, he's a little bit tired, but he's doing the work. And he's trying to figure out like, okay, what do I do next? What am I doing here? I think in this situation, our solar plexus might need a little bit of a boost because it's more about like getting back into that confidence and feeling like all this work that you're doing is actually like it's going somewhere. It's going to turn into fruition. Like it's it's really on the right track. Just keep going and just have the confidence in your vision of what you want to to do. That's the solar plexus. The next chakra is the ace of wands. So the ace of wands is, first of all, it's a fresh start. So it's like your heart has gotten like a supercharged boost. And also the wand, the wand is like a magician's tool, right? So the wand manifests and creates cool stuff. So when you're coming from your heart and put your heart first, then you can like create magic and wonderful things, whatever you want. And it's all up to you. Like whatever you want to create, it's yours to create. Set the intention and your heart. And if you come from your heart, you'll do great things in this world. And the next chakra is the throat chakra. Okay, so we've got the five of swords. The number five represents change. So there's change coming from using your voice. Five of Swords is also there's like some sort of mental infighting that may be sort of waffling between speaking your truth and hiding. And the mind is constantly sort of jumping in between those those extremes. So what we really need to do is to be clear about what we want to create and what story we want to tell and then things will line up but right now with the like mental infighting being too much in your head it's not going so fluidly so that's another chakra that that you might want to work on would be the throat chakra so expressing yourself and using your words swords for me are the word sword is s w o r d so it contains the word word in it so uh they're action words so use your words use your voice and be clear and slice through all the BS. <laughs> the next chakra is the third eye chakra, and we've got the seven of wands. Now, the seven is a very spiritual number. It's also dubbed everyone's favorite number in the world. It's like got that cachet. But in this case, I think this is kind of an extension of this throat chakra where this person is kind of battling what's going on in their head. The head's not aligning with everybody else. And so it's putting down the weapons and not engaging in the battle because it's in you. Like, right? If it's your if it's your own 
battle, not anybody else, then you can disengage and you can focus on something else. So focus on what you want to create, focus on feeling good, leave all the baggage from the past behind and just focus forward and don't give in to the doubts and the battles and tune into your own trust, trust in your own voice and guidance. And then the last chakra, oh, Knight of Cups. <laughs> so the Knight of Cups on the crown chakra, look how gentle this horse is. You know, he's moving forward and he's just like carrying the knight. And the cup represents emotions and feelings. And see this knight, his helmet is up. So he may have the helmet, he's protected, but his face is showing. And so there's a lot of healing here. This knight is showing up and he's got his cup of emotions. He's being authentic. He's healed. He's done a lot of healing work and he's got his trusty horse with him. And the knights can be, you know, either masculine or feminine. It's just, that's the name. Yeah. So onwards and upwards, moving forward and trusting the path, trusting the journey. So, wow, like that's quite an interesting story here. But I think the three weakest chakras are the solar plexus, the throat, and the third eye. Otherwise, like really strong, strong chakra constellations. Does anybody have any uh, comments or anything you'd like to add? Bridget, yes? Just to say thank you, Maria. I'm not familiar with tarot, but I really love the kind of the story. Yeah, there were definitely things in there that, that resonated for me and, and given me things to think about. So it was great to hear your your knowledge and, and your interpretation of the, the story of those cards for us to reflect on. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any of those cards particularly that resonated with you? They did resonate as we went through, but because there's such a lot of information, I was scribbling it all down and I'm going to have to go back and reread it because I remember at the time thinking, oh, yeah, that really speaks to me. I think particularly this internal battle thing is, is a big one for me. So, yeah, that's really something that I need to, to focus on. But, yeah, just echo what Bridget said. Thank you. It was so interesting. I'm really looking forward to going back to the notes and taking it all in fully. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, we've been recording, so I will be sending the recording to all of you will get the full recording, but I will also be posting it on an edited version on YouTube. So you can go back and look at the readings and see what cards. Yeah. 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 Thank you. For me as well, it's trust the journey. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes, yeah, you do have a destination to go to, but also trust the path that you're treading that it's the right one. I felt reassured by hearing that. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. It's more about the journey than the destination. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And uh, so enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Um, you're only going to pass through here, you know, once. And then something else will show up. So uh, enjoy it as it comes and let it unfold and trust that you're being supported and trust that... Uh, you're not alone, you know. That's it. That's very, very reassuring what you've said. Very reassuring. Oh, thanks. You saying about enjoy the ride, Maria, it's, that stuff recorded with me as well. I've just finished a book that's in the kind of like the supermarket top, whatever at the moment, uh, Sophie Kinsella, The Burnout. And part of that is linked to surfing. And there's a surf teacher in there. And his one of his catchphrases is enjoy the ride, which is oh. really stuck with people as children when they're now adults and things. And you just saying it there, it's kind of like, oh, there's that phrase again. That's something I need to listen to. So thank oh. you. Oh, thanks. What a beautiful metaphor. I just I just pictured someone surfing on a big wave. And it's true because you're like, when you're out in the middle of the ocean, I don't know if you ever watched this, but you see the paddlers and they're all like sitting there and then they see the wave and they like look behind them and they just start paddling and they catch the wave and they stand up on the surfboard and then the surfboard carries them to shore. And 
the paddling is like doing the work, getting yourself ready. And then when you, when the timing is right, you jump up on the board. And I don't know how they do that. I never could figure that out. But they jump up on the board and they're like on this dynamic thing, force of nature. And uh, that's the fun part. <laughs> so let yourself be there, you know. So, uh, yeah. So if anyone is interested in talking with me further, and you can book a free call with me, and we could talk further, I can do uh, another chakra constellation healing reading for you, or I also have a coaching program called Tune Up Your Chakras. So if you're interested in really diving into self-care with chakras, that program is really awesome. And also have a YouTube channel called At Amalite Yourself. And I post uh, videos about chakra healing and self-care and spirituality and stuff. So have a look there. Also, if you're interested in any of the essential oils or know someone who might be, I also am a wellness ambassador for, for doTERRA. And I do crystal mapping sessions as well, if anybody wants to do that. So we explore where you are and where you'd like to go next using the wisdom of the crystal. So if that interests you. I've got lots to offer, but even even if that is not your interest, but you just want to talk, I'm here. I'd love to talk to you more, especially Jackie with the chakra dancing. I'm like super excited. And Claire and Jackie, since you're both in the same area, you might want to connect and exchange emails or something. Does anybody else have any questions or, or anything like that? just want to thank you, Maria. This has been very good as, as usual. Oh, thank, thank you, Elaine. Can't wait to meet you next week in person. Yes, I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. We're going to have fun that evening. Yeah, yeah. Elaine invited me to a gala. <laughs> going to a gala. It'd be so cool. Yeah. You'll we'll have to take a picture together and, and send it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So where her husband's going to be performing. So, uh, so we get to have some music. I just want to say to all of you, I really 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 appreciate you coming today and showing up and sharing and and participating and um being open and doing the work and just being uplifting to other people and uh, i'm just so glad that you're here and that we've crossed paths and got to know each other a little bit more and i would love to keep in touch Thank you for a, a beautiful session. It's been really so relaxing and very, very informative and empowering. So thank you from my perspective. Thanks for letting me in, incidentally. I of do apologise again for not being on time, but it, it was where it was. It was one of those situations I couldn't control. So, yeah, yeah. I get it. All right. Well, thank you, Maria. It's been lovely and it's been lovely to meet everyone. And uh, I really yeah. enjoyed enjoyed it. It's, it's done me a lot of good. So thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Big hugs really to lovely. everybody. Yeah. Big hugs. Bye. 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 Bye.